Imagine a world where women in tech everywhere have no glass ceilings to break through. Imagine a world where there's no gender gap in this vastly expanding field. A world where girls everywhere have equal access and opportunity to technology. And now, what if I told you that the only thing stopping this world from happening is the fact that we let girls believe that tech is not for them. We let them believe that people who look like them don't or can't make it big in this field. What if I told you that we as a world have failed girls by not giving them a level playing field and by not exposing them to the incredible possibilities in technology? My name is Malavika, and I'm the co-founder and executive director of Girls Make Apps, a national nonprofit organization that works to bridge the gender gap in technology. If you couldn't already tell, I'm a woman in tech, and as such, I've been a part of countless groups and organizations. And while these groups have really left a profound impact on me and given me the social responsibility I feel I have, I'm here today to talk to you about my journey through the space and the critical paradigm shift that I've experienced because of it. This story begins with a sophomore in high school from three short years ago when I first learned about the National Center for Women and Information Technology, or NCWIT. You see, by this time, I had already experienced my fair share of sexism in tech from being the only girl in my first programming class of 40 to being called bossy instead of a boss while leading my middle school robotics team. But even with all of this, I grew up loving tech, even though I still wanted to find a community of like-minded people where I could feel a sense of solidarity. And it turned out that NCWIT was exactly that. Today, members in the community range from software professionals to young high school women just getting their journey in tech. And every year, the group grows bigger, with more women coming together in solidarity as warriors against all of the people who tell us we can't. In recent years, with Running Girls Make Apps, I've learned that here we have a community, a girl gang like no other, and we are all changing our corners of the world. But despite the lifting each other up and making room at the table we do for each other on a constant basis, recent reports from companies like Atlassian show that the tech industry is just not making significant headway when it comes to building diverse teams. And it's these facts that have shown me that I have to shift my perspective because we can't rely on women in tech organizations like my own to actually give us equality in tech. So why is this the case, right? Why aren't these women in tech organizations enough? Well, the problem of diversity in tech stems from the fact that most of us view diversity as a novel target we have to hit. And when viewed as a novel target, diversity becomes exactly that, a novelty, instead of the norm. But the tech industry and the education sector need to wake the hell up. Diversity and balance and representation of women aren't visions of our future, but targets of our past. Do you get that? They aren't visions of our future, but targets of our past that we have failed to hit time and time again. Did you know that according to the latest Diversity and Inclusion in Tech report published by Atlassian in 2018, company-wide diversity and inclusion initiatives in Silicon Valley have actually dropped from 55% in 2017 to 45% in 2018, with hiring initiatives just flatlining across the board. And as a result of little to no tangible progress, we have less than 30% of underrepresented groups at these companies that actually feel a sense of belonging, a sense of belonging in the workplace. And with this, you sort of see that that's where you get girls' interest in STEM dropping as they grow older. Time hardens these stereotypes. 
And this much has been shown by recent studies done by Microsoft that show that girls actually gain an interest in STEM as young as 11 years old, which then sharply drops by the time they're 15. This is heartbreaking to hear, right? Because girls who actually think about entering tech stop considering it at one of the most critical times in their lives. But again, it all makes sense when you can understand our country's access problem and unrealistic expectations. In recent years, with Running Girls Make Apps, I began studying what really prevents underrepresented groups from entering tech on a much larger scale. And here's what I found. Everywhere in our country, from our classrooms to our boardrooms, we set unrealistic expectations for women and people of color. Because how can you expect there to be diversity in tech when tech education and tech initiatives aren't even targeted towards these in individuals? And when we aren't even providing them a way to get there? Now, this can be a hard concept to really internalize. So here's an example. If I were, let's say, a men's volleyball advocate, right? And I wanted to get a more diverse group of players to play the sport. So I went to the south side of San Antonio and told a group of Latino American boys that we need diversity in men's volleyball and they should play the sport. What do you think the reaction would be? Yeah, probably a lot of laughter. <laughs> because Latino American boys in this country have little to no representation in something like men's volleyball. They don't even see it as a tangible choice for them. So just saying we need diversity is never enough without providing a path or infrastructure or representation to get there. This is where you get things like imposter syndrome and that famous statement, maybe it's just not for me. Because we're expecting these students, most of whom don't have parents with tech or engineering backgrounds, to choose STEM as their future. And how can we expect this? when computer science isn't offered as a class or integrated into the curriculum in any way in our schools. Here are the facts. The demographics of our nation are shifting rapidly. According to the National Center for Education T Statistics, more than half of the student population of our K-12 public schools is not white. And the Latino population continues to be the principal driver of US demographic growth with a 2% growth rate, according to the Pew Research Center. Tech hubs like California and New York are home to some of the largest numbers of racial and ethnic groups. But when you look at participation in the tech industry itself, those numbers plummet. And why is that the case? Again, computer science education isn't offered in public schools. A majority of these students don't have relatable role models or any representation to look up to. So how are they going to choose STEM? Maybe it's just not for me. Now, that is a critical statement because of just how many times I've heard it. From girls as young as nine years old in our Girls Make Apps workshops, to women in their 40s who are looking to make a career change and feel like they've just been left behind. This is important because we are all susceptible to an idea that is wrong at its root. Because we live in a world where we teach boys to keep going regardless of their failures, to play rough and pick themselves up when they fall. But we teach girls to play safe and not fail. We teach boys from the beginning to metabolize failure quickly and keep moving at warp speed, but we teach girls to be afraid of risk and afraid of jumping. When we shift this attitude we have towards boys, to, way the, to, to the way we raise girls, we show them how to be unbreakable. We show them that mistakes catapult you further and obstacles make the journey greater. We give them power and they in turn will use it to power the world and become catalysts for change. 
we saw this immediately in Girls Make Apps. In the beginning, 80% of our students said that they rated their confidence with using technology as low. 95% said they hadn't even considered the possibility of a career in tech. And I think the responses really sunk in for me when two of our students who were Hispanic and English as a second language learners called me over once after not being able to get a piece of their app to work. And they told me that very same statement. Maybe it just isn't for us. And right there in their slumped shoulders and disappointment with themselves, I saw the problem in the way we raise girls. Because I was them, not being able to get things to work, which is a constant in tech, frustrated me so many times into wanting to give up. Failure scared me, and sometimes it still scares me into being completely risk averse. But I was, and I am lucky, because I've always had people around me who have expected me commanded me to pick myself up and get back on the horse every single time. And in sharing my experience with these girls and in telling them all the times I haven't been able to get things to work, all the times I've turned to someone for help, I began normalizing failure for them. I began showing them that yes, sometimes things may not work out, but you can never let that stop you. They went on to build a fully functional Android app that's been released on the Play Store and is being used in their district to help other English as a second language learners just like them. But the main takeaway you have to get from this is that fact that that app wouldn't exist if they had given up, if they had walked away from that workshop. So how many inventions, how many miracles, how many breakthroughs are we missing out on because of the way we raise girls? How many women in your lives would have gone on to build amazing things if you had been there for them, supported them, and shown them that it is their right, they have a place here? How many? So, now that you've heard all of this, hopefully learned a few things, you may be asking yourself, what can I do? Well, first of all, figure out how to turn your position, your privilege, into action. You can do this if you're a CS educator, if you're a teacher, if you're a parent, if you're a member of a board of education, if you're a guidance counselor. Figure out how to get computer science taught at your schools because it starts at the beginning. We need to start providing a level playing field for everybody in this country. You can do this by partnering with organizations like CS for All and my friend Ruth Farmer, who's the chief evangelist over there. One person and one teacher may not be able to change the world, but with collaboration and persistence, it is definitely achievable. And you can ask her if you don't believe me. I just wanna go back to that because one person may not be able to change the world, but you can change one person in the world. You can change their story. If you're a man, you can be an ally in so many ways. Your uplifting of women's voices does so much more than ours. You have privilege, so recognize it and use it because it is still a man's world, but you can help make it an equal one. And to all the women, keep fighting the good fight and being those role models and those CEOs and getting those raises and just being incredible because you're showing the world that we are unstoppable. The world is changing and it is time we helped women crack the code. Thank you.